Today's video, we're going to talk about when Marshall Cat Naomi. This is by far the best four star early game unit and a unit as free to play you can use for the entirety of the game for PvE, dungeons, raids, etc. I'm going to talk about why and how to build her. And of course, we'll discuss other things as well. If you like my videos and like my content, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when I post a video. Let's go, baby. As you can see, I do have the bonus for Foggy now. And this is with Wind Marshall Cat, Shannon, and Kona Mia. I'm using Light Cleef, which helps me protect my Naomi and Foggy. I've already completed Foggy a couple times since Sunday, and without the bonus, it's super rough. But why is Wind Marshall Cat arguably, arguably the best four star PvE damage dealer? Well, she is out of fire, wind, and water. The only four star unit that can compete with Wind Marshall Cat is Crow, the Dark Inagami. Crow will outperform Naomi as a soul link in world boss and guild boss and in raids if the situation allows it with your team comp, your other summoners team comps. There's got to be a ton of debuffs for Crow. Now Naomi works the same way though, in a way. Let's talk about Naomi first and then I'll showcase her where I use her already. Let's talk about her passive first. So this is per target's harmful effect. It increases the crit rate and crit damage based on the number of harmful effects on the target when dealing damage with skills. So what this means is every harmful effect gets her 15% crit and 20% crit damage. So early game, Naomi is the best, the best four star damage dealer that you can build. And that's because of your rune issues. Early game, you're not going to have good runes. And you also have to know what you're going to be bringing as a team comp. Naomi herself has two debuffs on one skill. Her first skill, which is by far the best skill because you can stack crit damage taken up. So as a soul link, you just spam this first skill. Second skill has the same damage modifier. It does have a bleed. However, this skill since crit damage taken up and attack down if it's a boss, two debuffs, more damage on these skills. So you already have two debuffs, which means that's 30% crit and 40% crit damage. Now you bring in a Dark Harpy Helia, who has defense down and damage taken up, which is another two buffs. So you already know there's going to be four harmful effects on the enemy, which will increase Naomi's crit rate by 60%. Now I'm 99.9% .9 positive that 60% is not literally 60%. It's 60% of whatever your crit rate is. So 60% of 51.5% is 30.9% added on to the crit rate of Naomi. So she's going to have like around 82% crit with four debuffs. Now you add in any summoner debuffs. You got Cleef adding like a provoke and a blind. That's six debuffs, 90% crit rate to Naomi's 51%, and you've pretty much close enough reached 100% crit. And this is why Naomi's so good, because really all you need to build her on is like 50% crit rate. You can do more to guarantee yourself, that's fine. But the lower you have to focus on a stat in runes, you can push other stats, like attack and crit damage, etc. This is what makes her so good. Now you compare Win Marshall Cat with Crow. Crow is all about his second skill, Attack Scar. Based on the number of targets harmful effects, it increases the damage that that skill does. I mean, it can hit, but you need a lot of debuffs. If you only have like five or six, Naomi's gonna be better than Crow. But if you're pushing like 10 debuffs in like a raid or a guild boss or world boss, whatever, Crow will outshine Naomi, but at the same time, you need to build Crow, and it's harder early game. You need a high crit rate, you need high crit damage, high attack, etc. And when you need to focus on more stats, it's harder to boost others. That's why Naomi is good. 
All you really need the shoe for is around 50 crit, like I said. And then you can start working on crit damage and attack. But enough about the technicals of Naomi. Let's see what she can do. Hall of Magic level 10. I use Naomi, Helia, and Shannon. And I'm going to do it on auto. But Naomi will easily farm Magic 10 at a decent speed too. Alright, here we go. I'm just going to make sure that the first skill is on for Na uh, Naomi. And here we go. So 1, 2, 3, and he's pretty much dead already. I mean, this is like, what, day 5, day 6 maybe? And for free to play to farm Magic 10 this early for 14 seconds is, I think, a really good thing. With some 3 star units and a 4 star unit. As of right now, for tier glades, I can only farm level 13, and that's kind of okay for me because I'm okay with that. Because it's legendary runes that have a chance to drop now. But it's pretty much a speed run. It is 100%. The problem why I can't farm 14 is because of the, my power level. 14 has a higher power level and it becomes an issue uh, and I don't get that burst damage like I do here when I have the bonus for this dungeon. But that's it. Hopefully I'll get some increased power level here shortly so I can do 14 and then 15. But there we go. We have legendary runes already. Stage 13. I can complete level 15 path of training super easy with Naomi subjugation again super easy complete level 10 no problem TOA 200 normal complete that's Naomi Hellyan Shannon and this is on slightly hard giggity you literally just go in and just attack the boss and then wait for all the debuffs to get on the boss and then you start using Naomi skills and it's just pop 89,000 pop 93,000 pop and he's already at 8% he's already pretty much dead 89,000 dead right now TOA hard 88 and that's just because I stopped because to do other things celestial spire I'm on floor 29 and this is because of power level I just get demolished here like desert queen is crazy if you want to see a Foggy Prison raid guide, just search in YouTube barcode Foggy Prison and I will teach you how to do Foggy Prison. But we're going to run Foggy Prison with some pugs and see how this goes. This should be exciting. We're going to focus Vita and we're just going to see what we got going on here. And hopefully, just hopefully, hopefully we're going to do some damage here. Let's get out of that. Oh, get out of that. But I do have the bonus and that's what helpful the most. I mean, as a Cleef, I literally just stand here and spam his two first skills and spam Naomi's first skill. And then when I see some AoE damage coming, then I use Cleef's third light skill to give Naomi invincibility because she has the highest attack. And there it is, Foggy Prison down. I was the only one with the bonus. Resistance ring, that's a joke. And that's pretty much everywhere I take her so far. She's a PvE monster, even though people use her in PvP. I wouldn't the way I build her. She's only going to crit half the time. I have her on a broken set, really. I have like a blade set that's like a four star blade and a five star blade blues. They have good crit damage on it, so it's worth it. I really just focused on attack and crit damage. I plus 15 these runes because those were the most beneficial to her damage, and it increases her power level. But right now, 57,500 for power level. That will go up when I get better quality runes and better runes overall. She is max skilled. She is the Waken level 13. I just need some more martial cat pieces. But as you can see, I've literally only invested in like six, seven units. Because you don't want to spread yourself out too thin. You'll be really broke. You know, I got my Shannon, Konamiya, Salia. I got the Dark Harpy from the LND selective ticket. I made Bulldozer for current expedition, plus Bulldozer's a beast. I used 200 summons on the Sekhmet banner, so I got Sekhmet plus one dupe, and then I used one of my four star selected tickets on Wind Marshal Cat. I still have the other one, which I'm trying to decide whether it's going to be Chloe or not, which it probably is for TOA Heart. Plus, I actually pulled a Shoo Shoo, so I don't have to do the Secret Dungeon early. And that's the end of today's video. I just wanted to showcase Wynn Marshall Cat because she is by far, in my opinion, arguably the best Nat 4 DPS. And she is honestly really all you need for a long time. As your runes get better, her damage is going to get better. 
You don't need the triple S tier natural five star units for PVE. That's something you get down the line with exchange pieces shop or whatever the case may be. Or a random summon, whatever. Then you can use Alter's Blessing to get dupes of that triple S unit. But because materials are rare, focus those devil mons and your natural fives on PvP units. The higher rank you are in arena and eventually brawl, the more rewards you get weekly and seasonally. If you like this video, sub, like, ding ding a bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!